joint laws describe how several random variables um, behave together. And these are the most important part of probability and statistics, arguably. So <clears throat> assume that X and Y are random variables in a common probability space. We think of them to be real valued for concreteness. Usually you can replace the real line with your favorite measurable space. Most of the theorems remain correct in that case as well. For example, you might have R7 there always, and then you, you make a joint law of two seven dimensional random vectors. But for concreteness, we will keep this as R. What is the joint distribution? So the definition. The joint law or distribution, these are synonyms. The joint law of X and Y is the probability measure on R times R given by B, X, Y, then we plug in a set and we say what's the, um, this um, definition. So it is the probability of that um, X, Y as a random vector belongs to B. This is the way that we usually write this, but um, let's write it once using the proper set theoretic notation. It's the probability of the collection of omega such that x omega, and this pair x omega y omega as a pair belongs to B. And this is defined as a probability measure. So we think about this as a mapping B maps to this number and B belongs to Borel sets of the plane. And let's recall, this has a synonym, distribution. They mean precisely the same, law or distribution. Nothing changes in the, um, yeah, the two words are used commonly. So there's the definition. Uh, I was saying that it's a measure are we sure that it is a measure, really? Is it really a probability measure? Well, <clears throat> maybe we should make a little remark. Let's make a little remark. Um, what is the key thing to look? Um, define Z to be the random vector that collects these two co co coordinates. So now Z is a random vector, yeah. Having values in uh, the plane. And then actually what we, what we see here is that the joint law of X and Y is actually just the law of this random vector Z. So, what we called joint law is just um, the law of um, one random variable z. And we have already seen in the previous lectures that given any random variable with values in any measurable space, the law, this type of, these types of laws are always probability measures. And we might recall that we could write this as the probability um, that's sometimes used uh, as a notation. So we take, if you give me a set, so I first calculate the pre-image and then I calculate the probability. I mean, what I mean with this is that maybe it's clear. I, I'm sorry if it's too clear for you, but let me write it once anyway. So it's the probability of the pre-image by Z of this um, 
or else at B. So in this way, uh, this way the law um, behaves. Okay, questions? This is just a simple definition. So, so this is what confirms that the joint law is a probability measure because it's law of some random vector. Okay, what else is there to say about joint laws? Maybe it's fair to say that we might have several random variables. So let's assume that we have, um, how many? Let's have seven random variables now. The joint law here is that then we take, think about these random variables as a random vector. And then we ask, okay, the joint law is then in the same way, the probability that this, um, seven variate a random vector belongs to a Borel set B for B being now um, a Borel set in the seven dimensional Euclidean space. Clear enough. Okay, I assume so. What else is there to know about the joint laws? Um, let's see. Let's see, let's do an example with the joint laws you can calculate. So if you want to calculate, um, for example, for two random variables, so what's the expected difference squared of two random variables? So if you want to calculate this, I have two random variables, I have random variable X and a random variable Y. So in some, in using the basic definition, this expectation is the integral of uh, X omega minus Y omega squared, then I integrate with this uh, fundamental probability measure P. So and that way, and I integrate over the omega. But um, now we can also think that um, here we have a function. This is a function uh, G of X and Y in this way. And I would say G little x little y is equal to x minus y squared. So g is a map from r squared to r, non-negative function. And so using then the law, so I could write it as uh, integral. So first of all, we know that this is now the expectation of g of x and y. Yes. And we might recall that if we want to write x and y, this as a vector. So think about this as a vector z this way. So now it's a bivariate random vector. And then it becomes the expectation of, uh, of a random variable z evaluated using the function g in this way. Now we recall from previous lectures that, okay, for in this case, we can write this using the law of z. So we can write g of z and then the law of z dz. And then we integrate now z is a bivariate. So we integrate over r2. Yeah. What happens next? Then we recognize that, okay, Z is actually the joint law. So Z is actually the random vector. So we can write this as uh, R squared G of X, Y. And then I write the joint law X, Y here. And then I write um, DX, DY to indicate that we are integrating of, uh, with respect to both X and Y together over to R squared. So finally, this becomes R square integral. We plug in G X, so it was X minus Y squared. Integrated with the joint law X, Y, DX, DY. Does this look understandable to you? Now maybe there's a, maybe I should, yeah, maybe you have a question about this or, or does it look confusing? Give me, give me green light if this sounds non-confusing and it sounds completely clear to you. Give me green light if it's kind of, uh, if it looks really clear to you. Okay, okay, at least uh, a couple of green lights and maybe if you have a question somewhere here, then it's a good time to ask. In some sense, 
you see there's a chain of equalities, nothing kind of complicated is happening. We are not calculating anything. We are just rewriting things in different spaces. But uh, I hope that this is in, in that sense clear that you, you keep uh, a track on which space we are running in, in, in what part of the equation. So here we are in omega, omega. Now we are still in omega, but here, this is the key thing. We jump from omega to the real, um, to the Euclidean plane. And then the rest is in the Euclidean plane. So that's how this um, thing goes. And now with this derivation, so maybe we clean up a bit and conclude that for this type of integrals. So what you can always do now from now on. So if you ever need, you might actually, this might be a common thing. You might quite often, it might be the case that you are facing with things of this sort and you need to calculate, for example, the, what's the expected squared expected difference of two random verbs. Really common thing, uh, problem in machine learning and statistics. So squared kind of error that you want to calculate. So now you know that um, this is usually so abstract that you cannot do anything with this. So let's take it away. It's helpful in our theory to kind of place things into a general and proper context, but that's how you might calculate things. And of course, think about any function now. We generalize this, so think about any function g depending on x1 and then maybe seven coordinates. So then it's of course the integral over r7 g of just normal real numbers up to seven and then the joint law of these seven things. And then we might write dx1 up to dx7. The joint law is here. So in principle, that's really general. So it means that um, you can, um, it could be discrete or continuous, so it includes everything in the same package, or it could be a mixture of some discrete part and continuous part. So that's how it works, and it kind of works with vectors really um, in the way you would hope it to work. Yes, <clears throat> maybe one more thing related to this thing. Uh, this uh, issue is, uh, is um, marginal laws. So assume now that um, let x be um, uh, let x be a bivariate random vector with law p x. Okay. On the plane. Now, imagine that somebody magically can give you a nice description of this um, joint distribution or, or the law of the random vector on, on the Euclidean plane. But then imagine that you only care about x1. So we assume that we look at uh, this random vector, but let's assume that we only care about x1. So we want to kind of extract the law of x1. So then what is the law of x1? Because this is the joint law, so it should tell us everything about um, both random variables. So it should also tell us about the distribution of x1. Yeah. So, but how do we kind of, um, how can we write it? So let's do a basic calculation. So um, we want to calculate actually, this is also quite easy to do. So we ask the law of x1 for some um, set B. Now B is in a subset of the real line and not R squared. What does it mean? It means the probability that X1 belongs to B. And I think you can write this as a, set, a subset of omega or just to make sure it is the subset of those omega such that X1 omega belongs to B. 
B and we remember that this is a subset of the big omega. So and P is a probability measure there. Now, how can we get this event? Kind of how can we represent this event using the both random variables? That's the key to this question. And the answer is we write this as the probability that x1 still belongs to b and x2 belongs to somewhere. So of course x2 belongs to some somewhere in the real line because it's a real valued random variable but uh, this is trivial but that's the key because now with this trivial thing we can write it as um, as the probability that x1 and x2 jointly belong to the set B times the real line. And now if you look at this, so it is the joint law of x1 or, or, the, or the law of the random vector for B times R. Clear enough? So maybe we should summarize this. Let's call it a fact. Px1, and if you give me any b1, we can calculate it as from the joint law in this way. We write b1 times the real line. And also we get bx2, uh, the law of the second random variable using the joint law and then real line times b2. That's true for all B1 in the Borel sets of the real line. And of course, that's the same thing here. You might think, okay, maybe there's still one more kind of fancy way of writing this using um, algebra. If you want to be fancy. So you might like to write this as the Px. Can you write it as some nice pre-image? If you take the pre-image using the first coordinate projection and then of B1. So that's what you get there. And here actually you get it as the, you get the pre-image um, or maybe this a circle is confusing. So let's take the circle away. It's not the big thing, but it might be confusing. So let's say this way, projection pre-image b1 and this is px projects and second coordinate pre-image of b2 so in short you could write that um, the law of the kth coordinate is obtained from the law of the random vector and then now i'm using the circle to be brief so the kth coordinate projection pre-image. So if you like brief algebraic notation, then this formula gives you that, okay, if you have the joint law here, then you get the marginal, uh, the, the laws of the individual random variables using um, the projection pre-image in this way. We also note that um, This is, um, yes, let's just know that uh, this, is the call, this is called the kth marginal distribution. This is called the kth marginal of Px. So this is uh, probability measure in the vector space and these are the marginals are probabilities on the um, real line. This is the story about marginal distributions in the really general framework. Do you have questions about this? We will go to more concrete examples in a while. What is marginal distribution in Finnish? Ah, thank you. Nice. Um, yes, margin means um, reuna. So I would call it, um, yes, I would call it uh, 
reunajakauma. 